Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is talking about matrix multiplication again, and in particular, is the describing how you can multiply a matrix by a column vector using the columns of A as opposed to the rows of A. And then as, a, uh, as an additional thing, we'll prove that matrix multiplication is associative, a very useful fact. So let's get started. Um, so if B is a M by N matrix, M rows and N columns, and if you have the rows of B, row one, row two, row M, so each one of those Rs are not just a number, but they're actually a, um, an, a, a row vector with N entries, then, um, and if you have a column vector that's N by one that has N rows and one column, then we know how to multiply B times C. This was a subject of an earlier uh, video. And, and what you do is you just, you just find the dot product of the rows of uh, B with that column vector. So the first entry of the result is the dot product of the first row of um, uh, B with the column vector C. The second entry is the dot product of the second row of B with C and so forth. And each of those, the dot products are a number. So BC is a column vector. And, um, and B is, was M by N, had M rows and N columns. C is N by one, N rows and one column. And the resulting um, vector BC is M by one, has M rows and one column. Now, the question for this uh, lecture is, can we write BC in terms of the columns of B? So in the definition, the one I just gave you, we use the rows of B. We say, take the rows and find the dot product. And the question is that, can we write it in terms of columns? Why would we care? Well, the reason we care is that sometimes we have different kinds of information and there are different things we want to do with matrices. In particular, sometimes we want to know things about columns of B. And in fact, uh, that will be something that we will uh, pick up in future lectures quite a bit. And, and knowing this, how to write the product in terms of the columns will be actually extremely useful. Okay, so let's say that I have um, an M by N matrix, and I'm going to tell you what the theorem is. Um, and this time I'm writing B1, B2 through BN, the N columns. Each one of those, again, is not a number, but this time it's a column vector. It's an M by one column vector. So each BI is an element of RM. It's a column vector. And, and I have an N by one column vector that I'm going to multiply B by. So C is gamma one, gamma two through gamma N. So it has N entries. Those are actual numbers. And, and I want to find out what B times C is. And what this theorem says is that B times C is a linear combination of the columns. So when you want to multiply a matrix by a column vector, and I will say that often, um, is that is you find you one way to do it as opposed to the definition where, where we define it in terms of rows. One other way of saying what B times C is a matrix times a column vector is to say is that you find a linear combination of the columns gamma one times B1 plus gamma two times B2 all the way till gamma N times BN. Now, when you use a linear combination, you have to use scalars. Where do the scalars come from? Well, the scalars are coming from um, that column vector. So a matrix times a column vector is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix and the scalars come from the column vector. So that, 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 that's the theorem that we want to prove. So why is that? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. We just multiply it and see that that actually works. So uh, B, we were given the, the, the columns of it, but I'm going to now write it in complete glory. So uh, B has M rows and N columns, and here are the entries. So the betas, beta 1, 1, beta 1, 2, through beta 1, N, which is the first row of B, those are actual numbers. And beta 1, 1, beta 2, 1, to beta M1 is the first column, for example. That's B1. B2 is the second column, B1, 2, B2, 2, BM2, and so forth. And I want to multiply B by, um, by, B by C, by the column vector C. So I will do that. So according to the definition, what I knew before, I take the rows of B and, and find the dot product with that column vector. And when I do that, this is what I get. The first row times that column vector gives, gives me beta 1, 1, gamma 1, plus beta 1, 2, gamma 2, plus beta 1, 3, gamma 3, all the way till plus beta 1, n, um, uh, gamma n. And, um, and that's, the first, that's the first entry in the result. The second entry, you take the second row and find the dot product with, uh, with the column vector and all the way till the end. Okay, 
But this result, if you look at it, you can separate it out. You can separate it out according to, uh, and write it as a sum. So you can write it like this. So if you look at gamma one times the column vector beta one, one, beta two, one, all the way to beta one, M one, well, how do you multiply a scalar by a column vector? You multiply that inside to all of them. And if you do that with gamma two all the way till gamma N also, and then add them, you will get exactly what we had. So we sort of took that uh, a one sort of complicated looking column vector and split it up. And what did we get? We got exactly what we wanted. We got a linear combination of the columns of B um, with the scalars coming from, um, from um, the column vector. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, there's a companion theorem to, to, this, to the theorem that we just saw that uses that, um, well, that doesn't, it, it, it's, doesn't use that to prove this, but we use this in conjunction with this other theorem. So if you have a R by M matrix and B is an M by N matrix, and you know it's columns, beta one, beta two, true beta N, then um, what's A times B? Well, the way I know what A times B is, is you take rows of A and find the dot product with columns of B. That's sort of the way we defined A times B. What, but this says is that you can think of it slightly differently, although it's the same thing, you can think of, I can tell you what the columns of AB are. So the first column of AB is A times B1, A times the first column of B. The second column of AB is A times the second column of B and so forth. This is useful if you don't need to know all of AB and you just need to know the 47th column. This says, well, just take A and, and find the moment product of that with uh, the 47th column. Why is this true? Um, well, why is jth column of AB A times the jth column of B? Well, how do you find the jth column of AB? When you get to the jth column, you have to find the various rows of A and find the dot product always with that jth column. So you first find the row, the first row of A dotted with the jth column, then the second row of A dotted with the jth column, and those give you the entries of um, the jth column of AB. But what you're doing is exactly finding A, a times um, uh, the jth column of B. So the proof is just, if you just write it down, uh, you're done. But the point of this is that how this is a complement to the previous theorem is that, well, what's A times B5? Well, A times B5 is a matrix times a column vector. And we know that that's a linear combination of the columns of A. So we know that now the, the, um, um, the columns of AB, and if there's another one, you can talk about the rote of AB if you want. We will use that less often, just the way we have organized things, but, but that's also a useful thing, that the ith rote of AB is the ith rote of A times B. Um, uh, now, uh, so, so what's the jth column of AB? The jth column of AB is A times the jth column of B, but that's a linear combination of columns of A with the scalars coming from the jth column of B. So the jth column of AB is a linear combination of columns of A uh, with the scalars coming from the columns of, uh, but from the jth column of B. So this is a theorem that uh, the proof was just what I told you. There's not really much else to it, but again, as it is used as a companion to the other one. Okay, so now uh, as, as an application of uh, that little thing, we're gonna prove that matrix multiplication is associative. So if A is an R by M matrix, B is an M by N matrix, C is an N by P matrix, then I can multiply A times B times C, but I can, organize that in two different ways. I can do AB and then multiply it by C, or I can take A and multiply it by BC. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. AB is not the same as BA. I can't switch the place of two matrices, but, but I can put parentheses in different places. AB times C is the same as A times BC. Now it's important that you are able to multiply those matrices. Um, the, the first matrix has the same number of columns as the number of rows as the second matrix, and the second matrix has the same number of columns as the third matrix. Okay, now this fact is actually used all the time. So let me give you an example. For example, if A is invertible and you have AX equals B, AX equals B is a system of linear equations. Um, and uh, if A is invertible, then what you can do is you multiply on the left by A inverse. So you can say that A inverse times AX is A inverse B. And then you can say, that, well, therefore X is A inverse B because A inverse AX is X. However, to be able to complete that, I mean, to be able to say that argument, that argument relied on knowing that A inverse times AX is the same as A inverse A times X. 
we had to use associativity to be able to switch those parentheses. Why did we need that? Because then A inverse times A by definition of inverses is just the identity and identity times anything is X. So the reason that A inverse times AX is X well, has something to do with the definition of A inverse and A, but it also has to do with associativity. We have to first know that A inverse times AX is A inverse A times X uh, before we can do that. Now, it's not like every day we're going to remember to say, oh, we're using associativity. It's something that will come in the second nature, but we've got to know that it's true uh, before we can use it. So I'm going to show you how, how, to, how to prove this. Now, when you have three matrices like that, you could just write it out and do by brute force see that the two sides of AB times C and A times BC are the same, but it would be very painful because you would have three large matrices all with variables in them, like things you don't, parameters in them that you don't know what they are. And you would have to, and matrix multiplications are sort of the most fun thing to do. So um, uh, I'm going to streamline it in a particular way. So, so I'm gonna say from B, uh, I just wanna know what the columns of B are, B1, uh, B2 through BN. Um, C, I need to know its columns also, C1 through CP, but I actually need to know all of C. The C, I need to know it's in all of its glory detail. A, I actually don't need to know anything about. B, I only need to know its columns. So that's how am I streamlining it uh, by using uh, the previous, uh, previous theorem. I haven't told you how I use it, but I will in a second. So how am I going to do this proof? Well, instead of asking, is AB times C the same as A times BC, I'm going to ask you, are their ith columns the same? If the ith column of AB times C is the same as the ith column of A times BC, well, then if all the all columns are the same, uh, the two matrices will be the same. So what is the ith column of AB times C? Well, that's AB times the ith column of C. That, that's what, that was that companion theorem that we said. And AB, and, and the ith column of C is CI. So AB times CI, but AB is a matrix. And so, well, we'll, we'll go way back to that in a second. Let's look at the other guy. What's the ith column of A times BC? Well, that's A times the ith column of BC, again, by the companion theorem. A times the ith column of BC. Um, and the ith column of BC is B times the ith column of C, so it's BCI. And so what, what I have is that the ith column of A times BC is A times BCI. And you might say, well, these two things are the same already, and I'm done, but I'm not really, because this is also a special case of associativity. The fact that AB times CI is the same as A times BCI is associativity, except that the, the last matrix is not a, a huge matrix, is a column vector. So what we have done is reduce the problem from multiplying three matrices to multiplying two matrices and a column vector. So we have simplified the problem, but we're not quite done. We have to show that AB times CI is the same as A times BCI. So let's get on with that. So first AB times CI, what is that? Ah, now from the theorem that we know, we are multiplying ma matrix by a column vector. So I'm getting a linear combination of the columns of AB with scalars coming from CI. Linear combination of columns of AB with scalars coming from CI. So AB times CI, so I have to write the columns of AB, but I know what those are. Those are A times the first column of B1, A times the second column of B2 and so forth. And then when I write down this linear combination, I will get uh, C1i times ABI, C2i. So that's the, the, the uh, ith column of C, I wrote it there. Those scalars multiplied by those columns are giving me um, uh, AB times CI. Now I have to look at A times BCI. Well, first I look at B times CI. Again, I use the same theorem. Multiplying a matrix by a column vector is a linear combination of the columns of B with scalars coming from the column, so I get C1i B1 plus C2i B2 all the way till Cni Bn. Uh, remember that um, uh, B1, B2 through Bn are the columns of B, and C1i, C2i through Cni are the entries of the ith column of C. So now what, what happens if I find A times BCI? Well, I multiply through. I'm using the distributive law, which is actually not that very hard to show, that, that I can distribute A um, inside. So C1i times AB1 plus C2i times AB2, all the way till C and I times ABN. And the two things are the same. So what I showed you is that the ith column of ABC 
which uh, AB times C, which was AB times CI, is the same as the ith column of A times BCI, which is A times BCI, and that completes the proof. So what's the takeaways from this uh, short lecture? When you multiply, this is a something, a mantra that I'm going to ask you all the time uh, to remember. When you multiply a matrix by a column vector, well, you can use rows of the matrix times the column vector sometimes. Sometimes that's the, that's the useful thing to do. But often what you need to remember is that the result is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix and the scalars in that linear combination come from the column vector. You multiply a matrix by a column vector, you get a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. And the other thing that we can, we, we're not gonna often mention, but we're going to be using almost daily is that matrix multiplication is associative. It's not commutative, but it is associative. This is the end of this lecture. Hopefully I'll see you at the next one.